The Gospels are actually very much in line with the idea that Jesus was a Muslim. What the hell? It's not until later that Christian writings started introducing the idea that, hmm, maybe he is this divine figure. Maybe he should be worshipped. Maybe he was part of a trinity. You don't find these things in the Gospels. You mean the Gospels which begin with the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Or which say that a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved Son, about Jesus. Or the Gospels that say that people worshipped Jesus. Are you kidding me? Our dear friend Sajid made a video in which he tries to teach to his own Muslim followers about the enemies of Islam and the dishonest, ignorant people like myself. We can also, you know, see through some of these manipulative tactics that enemies of Islam try to dishonestly utilize. I published a video named Was Jesus a Muslim? in which I exposed the ridiculousness of this Muslim idea that Jesus was a Muslim. Sajid Lipim here desperately tried to defend Islam in a very angry way and blatantly lied to his own audience by saying that the Gospels, the earliest accounts of Jesus, are in line with the Muslim claim that Jesus was merely a Muslim. This is the first time that I hear a Muslim say that the Gospels are in line with the idea that Jesus was a Muslim. That is completely false. The Gospels teach a lot of things that are completely contrary to Islam. We have four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I will not even touch John because the Gospel of John is completely in conflict with Islamic theology and Islamic teachings. So I will do you a favor and only touch those other three Gospels that are known as the Synoptic Gospels, which deal more with the history of Jesus and which agree a lot with each other. Matthew 3.16 As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. In Matthew 4, Satan keeps tempting Jesus and challenging him on doing certain things if he is truly the Son of God. I'm skipping a lot of things here. I just want to get to a few examples. Matthew eleven twenty seven. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Severe blasphemy by Islamic standards. In Matthew 12, Jesus says that he, the Son of Man, is also the Lord of the Sabbath. In Matthew 16, Jesus explains that he must be killed and raised again. The Quran and Muslims strictly deny that Jesus was crucified, that he was killed. This one should hit hard. In Matthew 28, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Excuse me, Sajid, what was that again about Gospels being in line with the Islamic teaching and Christians later making up such things? Do you want me to go on? I can go into Mark 1, the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark, which says the beginning of the Gospel about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. Do we even need more? It keeps saying the same things. A voice from heaven said, you are my son whom I love. Luke, again, repeats many of the same things. Don't even look at the Gospel of John. It would probably have a heart attack. It directly says, I and the Father are one, and that the people started to stone him because, for, because of his blasphemy. Or, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Sajid, let's be very honest. No, seriously, let's be completely honest here. Let's cut the bullshit. You have no clue what you're talking about. And you're taking advantage of the fact that people who listen to you and who watch your channel are probably even more ignorant than you are. I am not a Christian. I never was a Christian. I don't believe in the Gospels. You claim that you were a Christian and that you did research Christianity, that you read the Bible, and that you rejected it knowingly and willingly. And because of that, I'm saying that you are a liar. Because when you are clearly saying that the Gospels are in line with Islam's teachings. Because the Gospels are actually very much in line with the idea that Jesus was a Muslim. 
then you are either knowingly lying to your Muslim followers, to your fellow Muslim brothers, which makes you a liar. Or it may be that you don't actually know what the Gospels say because you have never really read them, which is truly pathetic. And that means that you are ignorant but also a liar because you claim to know about these books. You claim to have researched them. You claim to know what is written in them. As said, Sajid, let us be very honest. You promote ignorance. You promote stupidity. The stupidity and the ignorance, the laziness, the sloppy handling of religion, which you thrive on. You know what I find really interesting about Sajid's video? This part. They also believe that he will come back in the future and that he will basically declare Christianity to be false and he will break the cross and will fight for Islam. So he's using very loaded, provocative language for his viewers, but really, Muslims believe that Jesus never told people to worship him, he never claimed to be the Son of God, but rather he was a prophet. So I am using loaded language because I said that Jesus will break the cross and fight for Islam. You mean I'm using loaded language, loaded words, which Muhammad used when he described the coming of Jesus as a Muslim? Is Sajid not aware that Muhammad said these very words, that Jesus will break the cross and kill the pigs, and that he will fight for Islam? Is he really not aware of these very basic, these very simple, very well-known prophecies and hadiths? Or does he know this, and is he deceiving the people who are listening to him by presenting a more peaceful coming back of Jesus and making it look like I am just using loaded language when I'm merely reiterating what Muhammad said? Let me tell you something, Sajid Lipham is a liar. I will be very blunt, this is the difference between you and me. I value knowledge, and I speak the truth, whereas you thrive on ignorance, and you use deception for your Islamic goals. You have no restraint and no remorse when it comes to deceiving people for the sake of Islam, and you make such great use of the ignorance of your masses. After going through this, I really wonder if you, Sajid, are the same way when it comes to Islam, your newfound religion, to which you converted without any proper reason, let's be very honest. We have seen your conversion testimony. While claiming that you have researched other religions, you have not even researched your former religion properly, you don't know anything about it. So I really wonder what you actually know about Islam. This is why I say that my job would be much easier if I was a Muslim apologist instead of a critic of Islam. You see how easy it is to be a Muslim apologist. You don't have to be honest, you don't have to be knowledgeable, you don't have to be smart, you don't have to think. And if people like myself approach you nicely and offer honest exchanges and conversations, then all you need to do is just to be angry, to insult them and to yell at them, because your audience will applaud you because they willingly buy the stupidity. And this is why none of these Muslim apologists are actually open to sitting down and debating whether Islam is true or not. All they can do is to be loud. Intellectually, they don't have anything valuable to offer. Thanks everybody, have a good day and stay away from Islam.